For the second set of notes on section 4.4, we'll be focusing on some proof examples that work with the equidistance theorems. Please be thinking about what you watched in the first video when approaching these proofs. For this first proof example, we're given circle O, so we know that that's the center of our circle. And we're also given that angle A is congruent to angle B, so I'm putting tick marks here. Now, in the end, we want to prove that CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB. So we have to find some points that are equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. Right away, I'd be thinking about the fact that if we're given angle A is congruent to angle B, we can get those opposite sides, AC and CB congruent. Because we know that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. At this point, we have a point C up here that is equidistant from points A and B. So I'm going to put a red dot on C, and we know that C is equidistant from A and B, so I'm putting yellow dots on those points. We know this because we have segment CA congruent to segment CB. Now we need one more point to also be equidistant from those two points, and that point has to lie on the same segment as point C. So since we're given circle O, what I'd be doing at this point is thinking about the fact that we can work with some congruent radii. But since we don't see any in the diagram, let's go ahead and draw them in. So I'm going to draw in OA and OB. We know that we can draw in those two segments because two points determine a segment. And we know that those two segments, OA and OB, have to be congruent because they're radii of the circle. So I'm going to list that in step 5. At this point, we have a second point, O that is equidistant from those two points A and B. And that point O lies on the same line as the red point C. So if we were to connect the red and blue points, C and O, with a line, we'd get line CD. So that means that CD must be the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Since we have two points that are each equidistant, from the endpoints of the segment. Both the red and blue points are equidistant from those yellow endpoints, A and B. So our reason would be, if two points are each equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then they determine the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So the red and blue points determine the perpendicular bisector of the segment with the yellow endpoints. Let's take a look at example two. For example two, we're given that segments AB and BC are congruent. And we're also given that D is the midpoint of segment AC. So I'm just adding tick marks on the diagram to visualize this a little bit better. Since we know that segments AB and BC are congruent, we can determine that that red point B is equidistant from those yellow endpoints A and C. And since D is the midpoint of AC, we get some congruent segments there, and we can say that D is equidistant from those endpoints A and C, since segments DA and DC are congruent. So at that point, we already have two points, the red and blue, if we connect them, we'd get the perpendicular bisector of AC, since those two points are each equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So, we know that BD must be the perpendicular bisector of AC. But we want to prove that segments AE and EC are congruent. So I'm kind of mapping this out. Since E lies on that segment BD, we know that it also must be equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So we'll write that out in just a moment. 
We know that since D is the midpoint, I'm writing in that AD and DC, those two segments are congruent because if a point is a midpoint, then it divides the segment into two congruent segments. And then we've already determined, since we have the two points, B and D, the red and blue ones, they're each equidistant from the endpoints of segment AC, those yellow points. So, we know that if we connect the red and blue points, we get that segment BD must be the perpendicular bisector of segment AC, because if two points are each equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then they determine the perpendicular bisector of that segment. But now, since we have point E that lies on that segment, the perpendicular bisector, BD, that orange point E must also be equidistant from the yellow points A and C. So we can say that segments AE and EC are congruent because if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Finally, let's take a look at example three. For example three, we're given that segment BD is the perpendicular bisector of segment AC. Well, since we're given a perpendicular bisector to begin with, let's look for some points that lie on that perpendicular bisector, and then we can get some congruent segments as a result. So, we know the BD is the perpendicular bisector of AC. So I'm first going to look at segment BD and say, okay, point B lies on that segment. So that means that that red point B must be equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, those two yellow points, A and C. So that means that segment AB must be congruent to segment BC because if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. But we also have this blue point D. Since D lies on the perpendicular bisector, we can say that D is equidistant from the endpoints of the yellow segment, A and C. So therefore, we know that segments AD and DC are congruent for the same reason as two. In the end, we want to prove two triangles, BAD and BCD, congruent. We already have two pairs of congruent corresponding sides. So let's go ahead and use the reflexive property on segment BD since those two triangles share that side. That gives us a third pair of corresponding sides congruent. So we can then say that the two triangles BAD and BCD are congruent by side side side. We'll pick back up with the third video in just a moment.